Um, so I'm going to start off here with an outlier detection um, improvement, which was added to the data quality application in 236. Uh, here I have the data quality application in 236, and you can see that it's changed a little bit from the previous version of the data quality app. Um, I'm going to switch over here now to uh, just show you quickly the data quality app from 235. So this is before the most recent changes. Uh, and in 235 here, we have a bit of a different layout. It's using a, a less modern tech stack. I'll get into the improvements to kind of the underlying technology and some of these applications uh, that have been introduced to, to a, a wide number of applications. But you can see that here with some of the slightly improved styling. Um, but the functionality changes that have uh, been made in 236 here are we've combined the standard deviation and min-max outlier analysis into a single tab. So previously you had separate uh, standard deviation and min-max analysis um, operations that you could perform to detect outliers in your data values. Um, now we have just a single, now I'm back in 236 um, with the updated styling. And you can see that there's only one tab on the left here for outlier detection. I will select that. Um, and you'll note that you have a selection of algorithm here. So we have min max values and Z score or Z score, which is a, a derivative of standard deviation. So the, the, um, uh, the functionality is all still there that we had in those two, um, uh, those two tabs previously. Uh, but this has also now been uh, give, gives us the capability to expand to uh, additional algorithms for outlier detection, such as the ones that Scott outlined um, when he was demonstrating scatter plots and outlier detection in the data visualizer application. Um, so we will be adding more algorithms to this list in 237. Um, and it's important to note that the, these uh, outlier detection um, algorithms are running on the server. So they are, do perform quite well on large databases um, rather than uh, previously they had to be, be done in a, um, in a less performant way in the browser. Um, so let's go ahead and, and demonstrate this. I'm gonna select the morbidity uh, data set where I know there's some data um, for this particular, or that with some, with some outliers. Uh, I then select an org unit. Um, as usual, I can select any, any level of this org unit, but I'm gonna go ahead and just select Sierra Leone for all of the, uh, the top level org unit in this instance. Um, you can select a start and end date. You can select the algorithm you want to use. I'm gonna start with uh, Z-score. Uh, you can uh, select the thresholds, which is the number of standard deviations above the mean that you would, uh, you want, or uh, above or below the mean that you want to detect for this um, uh, outlier detection. And you can also select the maximum number of results that you want to return um, in this uh, endpoint. There are some advanced options as well, such as the, the start and end date for the data rather than the, the, where they were entered um, and uh, a sort order as well. So this is going to sort by the absolute deviation from the mean. We're gonna go ahead and click start, which will generate this report. Just a moment, hopefully. There we go. Um, so now we have a report of the uh, outliers for this particular data set. And um, you can see that there's the z-score or z-score here in this column. There's also the deviation from the mean, which is the absolute value. Um, that's the difference between the mean and this, um, uh, this particular value. And that will give you the, um, uh, that will give you the, the, the sort order for this list as well. Um, another feature that um, is in this uh, outlier detection um, is the ability to mark certain data values for follow-up. So you can mark, uh, for instance, I will say mark ARI treated with, without antibiotics and all other new. These are again, individual data values that are very high that probably need to be followed up by someone to correct those um, outliers. Uh, and we'll see how we, we get back, that, back to that in a, in a moment. Um, if I go that now back to this outlier detection, I can again, select different values here. I could select sorting by the, the Z score rather than the absolute deviation from the mean. And this is also, going to allow me to determine where that mean is calculated for the, um, uh, the deviations to be um, selected. Uh, 
On the left here, we have the tab for follow-up analysis. And if we now select the morbidity data set and the parent or unit of Sierra Leone, uh, we can select start and end dates here as well. And we're just going to leave those as the default. Click those for follow-up. And we'll see that we have these um, uh, two data uh, values that I marked for follow-up previously that are now available in this follow-up tab and can be followed up uh, individually. Um, you can then unfollow those if you would like um, to say that these are uh, these are okay. They're, they may look like outliers, but they're not actually outliers. And we can remove those from this list. So that's the first feature here that we have introduced in outlier detection or in the platform set of platform features, which is detecting outliers uh, in the data quality application.